you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego, and welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast, where we start the weekend strong by covering how to properly care for ourselves based on what works best for us individually in order to reach for our health, fitness, and wellness goals, and in order to live your dream life. And in this episode today, I want to make it short, simple, sweet, and talk about five things that you can do after 7 p.m. that will change your life. Number one, reflect. When you journal at night, write down three simple questions and answer these three simple questions. Number one, what happened today that I'm grateful for? Number two, what actions moved me toward my goals? And number three, are there any changes I can make? And I love these questions because they strike a balance between gratitude and self-improvement. Number one, what happened today that I'm grateful for? It shifts your mind into searching for all the things that you may take for granted, that you may overlook. At the end of the day, maybe your brain only wants to think about the things that went wrong, how tired you are, all the things that didn't go as expected. But when you shift towards this question, what happened today that I'm grateful for? You start to search out and you start to find and you start to discover all the things that really went well in that day. And the more that you shine that light on what went well, the more you focus on the things that went well, the more that you can replicate that in the upcoming days. Second question, which actions move me towards my goals? This is a great productivity question. Did I do a productive day that helped me get towards my goals. And in order for you to answer this question, you must know what your goals are. So this is kind of another way of figuring out where the destination is. If I'm putting in my GPS where I want to go, I need to know the destination. And how can I know if I'm on the right path if I don't know the destination? So what actions move me toward my goals? I have to first know my goals, and then I have to go back into my day and see which actions move me towards those goals. And then you can also parse out whether you had a bunch of actions that day that didn't move you towards your goals that were uh, maybe not so important to do. And the more that you reflect on this, the more that you'll be able to have a more productive day in the upcoming days. And then last question, are there any changes that I can make? What are the things that maybe didn't go so well that day that I can make a change to and I can learn from that and I can grow from that and the next day maybe I can have less of these changes I can make or I can undo some of the things that didn't quite go so well the day before. So what happened today that I'm grateful for? What actions moved me toward my goals? And are there any changes that I can make? A nice little balance between gratitude and self-improvement reflect number one the second thing that we can do is disconnect imagine trying to park a car that's going 70 miles per hour that's essentially what you're doing when you hammer your brain with work and exciting tv shows and tiktok videos until the moment that you go to bed Toss your phone, get off your computer, and let your car slow down. You need to disconnect. A lot of people talk about the three, two, one. Three hours before you go to bed, you should stop eating. Two hours, you should stop drinking liquids. And one hour, turn off all devices and make sure that the lights are low. So at least one hour before you go to bed, disconnect. There are so many things that you can do. You can journal, you can do yen yoga, you can talk with your partner, you can read an actual book, disconnect, try not to slow down that car and park that car at going 70 miles per hour. So number two, disconnect. Number three, plan. Plan your day the next day. Plan for tomorrow. A productive day starts the night before. The simple act of writing down your three biggest to-do list items can create massive momentum for the day ahead. I saw this great meme on the internet today. It had 
one block of time. It was talking about uh, time blocking and it had, when you plan, you have a task from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And you're completely working on that task. A huge progress is made there. As opposed to if you did not plan what you're going to do, it has from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. figuring out what you want to do. And from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. actually doing the task. You're only halfway through the progress. So once you time block and you prepare what you're going to do, you can use that entire block of time to actually go into that deep work and get the task done. So for me, we've talked about this before. I list out the night before all the things that I want to get done the next day. It doesn't have to be in any order. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just list and list and list all the things that you can think of that need to get done. And then you can group things together that are alike. Maybe it's contacting this client, this client, and this client. Maybe it's going to this errand next to this store that's uh, right close to each other. You can kind of group things together and then you slide over these tasks into blocks where you have listed out your day from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., whatever your day is, you have it listed out and you can slide in time blocks for what you want to do with each task. And then at the very end, you can look and see what tasks you have remaining, what tasks you're going to be doing and when you're going to be doing them. The next day you open up your journal, you just follow your list. It's less mind work. You don't have to figure out what's going on. You can dive right in and you do not have to waste time figuring out what you want to do. So number three, plan for tomorrow. This has been one of the biggest game changers for me in the times that I do not do this. I can really tell how much time I waste and how much less productive I am in those days. Number four, breathe, breathe. You know how much I love breathing breath work. You take 20,000 breaths a day or more, and most of them are unconscious. You might as well make a few of them mindful. Try the four, seven, eight breathing technique through your nose. You're going to breathe in for a count of four. You're going to hold your breath, or I like to say, pause your breath. Cause you don't want much tension here. You're going to pause your breath for seven counts, and then you're going to slowly exhale through your nose or your mouth for eight seconds. So breathe in for four, pause at the top and hold for a nice long seven seconds, really feeling that stillness and quiet. And then you just let it go slowly and longer eight seconds out, relaxing, releasing. And this is one of the best ways to kill stress before bed. You want to have that extended exhale breathing. A hack that I do when I'm doing it in bed is I can connect to my heart my heart beat. Sometimes I'll put my hand on my chest. Sometimes I can even intuitively just introceptively feel my heartbeat and I'll breathe in for four counts of my heartbeat. I'll pause for seven and then I'll exhale for eight. And what's really cool is when you exhale slow and you really extend that exhale, your heartbeat slows down. So you're actually getting a longer exhale when you do it this way than an actual perfect count of four, seven, eight, try it out. Four, seven, eight breathing technique best way to kill stress before bed. And the fifth one, read. Experts agree that reading is one of the best ways to slow down your mind before bed. If nonfiction is too stimulating, try fiction. It can be a big adjustment at first, but it could be one of the best habits you'll build to help you wind down and still keep you entertained without screens. My option that I opt for is I don't opt for reading anymore. I do all of my reading and my listening uh, at the in the middle of the day. Um, I like to really, really dive into things that can help with health, fitness, and wellness so that I can share it here on the podcast. But at nighttime, I opt for Yen Yoga, which is a deep stretch. It, it's been a game changer. I've done it for the last four and a half, five years. It releases the tension in the muscle, which we know controls your state, whether you're in an amped up state or a relaxed state. Yen yoga helps you put you in that relaxed state. And then I finish with a yoga nidra meditation. You can find hundreds of videos on YouTube. If you search yen yoga for sleep or yoga nidra for sleep, you will find a ton of options. Just make sure that the screen that you're watching it on isn't bright. I try to listen to mine on my phone so that I have no light at all, or try to watch it on a dimmed down TV. You can set the brightness to super low. Uh, Yen yoga, so good. Anywhere between 15 and 60 minutes. Yoga Nidra, anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes, and you will be ready for bed. Or you could read a book without having those screens on. 
And to further enhance this episode to make it even more actionable, informative, and easy to implement, here are a few additional suggestions. Hydrate mindfully. Hydrate mindfully. Drinking water is essential for our overall health, but the timing and quality of hydration can significantly impact your well-being. Make sure you're getting your water in, but try not to get it in within about two hours of your sleep. And if you do get it within about two hours, just make sure you're sipping it. There is something to be said with chugging water or sipping water. If you chug water, a big bolus of water all at once, it's more likely that you're going to have to wake up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. So hydrate mindfully. And then when you're journaling, make sure that in the gratitude section, you're building on the reflective questions that we provided. You're incorporating gratitude journaling into your evening routine, and you're spending a few minutes writing down at least three things that you're grateful for each day. Research shows that practicing gratitude can improve your mood, enhance your well-being, and reduce your stress levels. So really lean into that gratitude aspect of the journaling. Create a relaxing environment. Creating a calm, quiet, dark, relaxing sleep environment is so vital for good sleep. Dim the lights, play some soothing music or some nature sounds, and use aromatherapy with lavender or chamomile essential oils to promote relaxation and prepare the body for restful sleep. For me, I love the app Brain FM. You have to try the app Brain FM. This is science backed music that can help you with sleep, relaxation focus and meditation. I use it every single day when I research for this podcast. I use the focus app and every single night I use the deep sleep soundtrack. So create that calm, quiet, relaxing sleep environment, play soothing music, try the brain FM app and use the discount code coach Damien SD, all one word, all lowercase to get a nice little discount on your first month and try it for a month free. Limit stimulating activities. Avoid engaging in stimulating activities such as watching intense movies or shows or engaging in heated discussions. Try not to do it close to bedtime. Instead, I suggest gentle activities, gentle like stretching and yoga, meditation, or light reading to help transform the mind and body into a state of relaxation. And then, of course, set boundaries with your work and your technology. I just can't stress this enough, the importance of setting boundaries with your work and technology to protect your personal time and promote work-life balance. Establish that digital detox period in the evening where you're disconnected from work and emails and any electronic devices to focus on self-care and relaxation. By incorporating these additional suggestions, you can transform your evenings into a rejuvenating and fulfilling experience that supports your health, your well-being, and your overall quality of life. And that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this self-care Saturday episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoyed this content, it helps a ton if you could post on your social media stories a screenshot of this episode and include one takeaway that you learned. Make sure that you tag me and share your journey. Tag me at Living the Dream underscore podcast or at Coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you have used different strategies after 7 p.m. to help enhance your health and your dream life. We want to know. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team that we can discuss on future episodes. I will be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.